Hello everyone. Today my goal is to help you learn a little bit about strategic management and maybe clear up some of the misunderstandings that you may have. Now first off we need to distinguish strategic management from everyday day-to-day -day management. You know what a normal manager does. They assign shifts, they interact with customers, they tell employees what, what station on an assembly line they need to work on, right? They run the business or organization on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, if you've ever had someone ask you, where do you see yourself in 10 years? That's an example of a strategic question. Why? Because first off, you have to say, wow, where do I want to be in 10 years? Okay, so that's your vision. Then you have to come up with objectives to get there. So you say, well, in 10 years, I want to be a millionaire. So that means four years from now, I need to graduate from college, right? And then you start building up to this future end state. So really strategic management, strategic planning is really just helping an organization determine where it wants to be at some point in the future. Now, let's continue. There's some basics, some definitions we need to cover, and I know the definitions can be boring, so just stick with me for about two or three minutes while we cover these definitions, and then once we cover the definitions, we'll jump into a real-world example of strategic planning using the U.S. Army. So hopefully you'll learn a little bit about strategic planning, maybe a little bit about the Army as well, and hopefully you'll understand the concepts a little bit better at the end of the video. So what are the basics? The basics of strategic planning, strategic management, they can be used interchangeably. A vision, a mission, long-term objectives, strategy, annual objectives, and policies. Now, right now, this just sounds like a bunch of terms, but don't worry, we will clear all of that up. First off, what is a vision? The vision is the first step in the strategic process. It's a single sentence that articulates what an organization is all about. Who are we, right? So if you want to think about a vision, this is why does the organization, why does it exist? So if I was an optometrist, right, I could have some catchy little slogan like, my vision is your vision, right? So that's saying it's very broad. I'm not saying I'm going to do laser eye surgery. I'm not saying I specialize in contacts or that I'm going to cater to adults or children. I'm just saying, hey, I deal with vision. That's what I do. Now a mission, here's where things start to get narrowed down. So what you'll notice is with strategic planning, we start very broad and we narrow down. So the vision is overall, right? And then our mission is our enduring purpose. It's okay, what are we here for? What are we doing? And yes, that does sound very similar to the vision, but here's the key difference. People mix up the vision and the mission, but they are quite different. So. A mission defines the scope of our organization. It differentiates us from other organizations, right? So the vision just says, hey, we deal with vision, right? And then the mission statement might say, we seek to provide high quality glasses, contacts, and uh, laser eye surgery to our clients, right? It's, it's defining the scope, what kind of areas that we operate in, right? Now, in order to achieve our mission, we're going to set long-term objectives. Now, the key thing is that a long-term objective is more than one year. And what we're looking for are specific results. So again, remember, everything's narrowing down. Vision, very broad. Mission, it is still broad, but it's narrowing it down saying, okay, this is the spectrum in which we're going to operate. And a long-term objective is a specific thing. So. Our mission statement might be to be the best consumer products company in the world, right? And then a long-term objective might say, okay, we wanna get 50% of the market share in North America, right? It's specific, it gives us direction, right? We can say, oh, okay, well, what is the best consumer company? Well, that's our mission, but our objective says, hey, getting 50% market share, right? That's something that gives us a basis for planning, a basis for action because it's measurable and it's a clearly stated objective. Now, how do we achieve these long-term objectives? We achieve them through strategy. So going back to the example, we want our mission be the best consumer products company in the world. Our long-term objective is hit 50% market share in North America. And the way that we're going to do that is through diversification or acquiring competing firms, right? There's a different, a couple different ways we could do this, but that's the strategy. Now, annual objectives are just like long-term objectives in that they're measurable, realistic, uh, everything like that, but they're less than one year. 
So let's switch and use a different example. Suppose we have a bakery and the goal is to increase sales 10% this year. That is an annual objective because it's less than a year. And the way that we can achieve, achieve that is through policies. So a policy is a means to achieve an annual objective. It's just like a strategy, except it's applying to things that are less than a year. So the, the company, the bakery could say, okay, we're going to have a sale every every second Friday, right? So every every second Friday of every month, we're going to have a sale and that's going to help us reach. Okay, so now we've got all the definitions out of the way. Let's actually get into an example. Now, here we have strategic planning alignment and that's basically just a fancy term to say, everything we do should support our vision, right? So our mission should support the vision, our long-term objectives should help accomplish the mission, the strategy should help us accomplish the long-term objectives. Everything supports everything else basically. So let's just minimize this PowerPoint really quick. We will leave this pulled up and then we're gonna just hop right over here to the Army vision and the Army mission. Now. Remember what the vision is. The vision is the broad overarching statement for an organization's existence. Now, here's the thing. Look at this Army vision statement here and what's the first thing you notice? This is very big. So the thing is, companies do not always follow textbook definitions, right? So the Army wrote a whole paragraph for its vision statement, right? And that's fine, but I think that using our terminology, the mission statement, even though they're calling it a mission, is actually a better example of a vision. So let's let's just call this mission statement, we're going to call that for our purposes the vision. So the Army vision is to deploy, fight, and win our nation's wars by providing land dominance across a spectrum. Okay, so what is this saying? It's Remember, this is very broad. We're going to provide land dominance. What is land dominance? Well, we're going to provide it, right? Because that's our vision. Now, if we want to start getting more direct, more into things, what we can say is, okay, what is our mission? And remember, what is the mission doing? It's limiting the scope of our organization. So land dominance is very broad. Let's just go through the army mission. Now, the army of 2028 will be ready to deploy, fight, win decisively against any adversary, anytime, anywhere in a joint combined multi-domain high intensity conflict. So right, we're, we're limiting, we're saying, okay, we're going to fight in a joint environment. That means we're going to be fighting with, the Marines are gonna be helping us, we're gonna work with the Air Force, we might work with the Navy some, so we're saying, okay, we need to be able to work with these other uh, uniformed services as well a combined, a multi-domain, high-intensity conflict, right? So we're saying, hey, we might be having to fight adversaries that have technology just like we do. Again, it's, it's defining the scope of our organization. We know, hey, we need to prepare to work with the Air Force, with the Navy. We need to prepare to fight enemies that have technology like we do. Now, here's where it really starts to narrow down. The Army will do this through, so we're saying we're going to do this through this, this, and this, right? through the employment of modern manned and unmanned ground combat vehicles, right? Aircraft, sustainment systems, weapons, coupled with robust combined arms formations and tactics, and then we get down and centered on exceptional leaders and soldiers of unmatched lethality, right? So they're saying, hey, vision, land dominance, mission, we're going to achieve this land dominance through using aircraft, through using soldiers, uh, through through the training, everything like that, right? So we're, we're getting a little bit narrower. Now, what's a long-term objective? Well, we can scroll through this, this publication here, but what I wanna do is I want to pull up this thing about exceptional leaders and soldiers, right? So if we, we, we scroll down just a little bit, we see that one of these long-term objective is leadership. The Army will prioritize development and promotion of smart, thoughtful, and innovative leaders of character who are comfortable with complexity and capable of operating from the tactical to strategic level. So basically, the Army's long-term objective is having a highly qualified uh, group of men, women that are willing to serve that can accomplish their jobs. So that's a long-term objective. And we see that that long-term objective supports, because remember the mission statement says, hey, we need good leadership. And the long-term objective says, okay, we can get good leadership by recruiting, training good soldiers. So that's a long-term objective. 
Now, how are we going to do this? Well, the Army has several recruitment strategies, right? So we're going to uh, we're going to recruit in a certain way, right? So if you've ever if you've been in the U.S., if you went to high school, you know the recruiters come to your high school. They uh, they have a certain way that they approach you, right? They might start off the conversation. They might give you a little goodie bag of Army supplies. That's a strategy. Um, in some instances, the Army will be at uh, anytime there's a career fair, they'll have a recruiter there. If there's a state fair, they'll have a recruiter there. So that's part of their strategy. Now, as we get down into the annual objectives, remember, the annual objectives is a one-year thing. So a couple months ago, the Army, and we'll go to a, pu a publication that I was working on here, the Army recently set a goal of growing its active component to $500,000. Now, 500,000 soldiers. So this is an annual objective, right? And then how is it going to do this? Well, this is a specific measurable objective that supports the vision and, and then supports the long run objective. The Army breaks this longer term goals into short milestones. So these annual objectives grow the Army to 500,000 soldiers. How are we going to achieve it? Remember, policies are the things that achieve an annual objective. So that might be okay at every recruiting station we expect you to make 10 phone calls a day i expect you to have two soldiers sign up every month you will go to at least 50 percent of the high school football games right anything really is a policy that's helping them accomplish that annual objective so i know this video is getting a little bit long but let's basically recap using the example the broad army vision is to win wars on land basically right how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to have highly trained soldiers. We're going to have aircraft. We're going to have all this stuff. So win the nation's wars. We need highly trained soldiers. So for that, we're going to set a long-term objective of training and recruiting soldiers. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do it through the way we interact with them. We're going to uh, tailor our recruiting message. We're going to think about the, the things that motivates people to join, and then we're going to try to portray that image to them. Okay, very good, but we still need a specific goal, and that's going to be our goal of hitting 500,000 soldiers by, let's say, the end of the year. How are we going to get 500,000 soldiers by the end of the year? Well, every single recruiter across the country is going to call 10 people every day. They're going to go to half of the high school football games, and they're going to go to at least four job fairs per year to recruit potential candidates, right? So, in summary, a good strategic plan, a well-managed company, everything is going to support something else. So every policy that we in institute is going to support an annual objective. Any annual objective is going to support a longer term objective and our objectives need to support our mission and vision. So everything comes together. I know the video is a little bit longer, but hopefully you all found it useful and I will see you next time.